to go to Daryl, who's on the line in Boca Raton, Florida. Daryl, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Um, we spoke on the air a few weeks ago. You okay. were incredible, and you helped me find my sweet spot. Oh, good. And now, yeah, it blew my mind. And, all right, so um, remind me. Tell tell all of us real quick. I remember okay. talking to you, but I don't remember the details. What What is your sweet spot? So um, it's basically taking my production, my love of production and making things happen for other people. Um, and my, I guess, my my sensibility of, around creativity um, and sort of, I guess, making the impossible happen for others. Mm-hmm. The sort of my superpower. Okay. So like the core, um, um, the core operations of a creative company. Gotcha. So someone that. Yeah, like a company that puts out creative content, a media company or something, but being at the core of their operations. Great. Okay, so what's going on? What are we talking about today? Okay, so I'm ready to like embark on a job search, and I have a resume question for you. All right, go for it. Okay, so um, right now, my I guess the last five years of experience doesn't really line up with the the job I want to have. So I, I'm sort of going backwards in time and maybe like five or six, seven years ago when I was a producer, that's more of what I'm trying to target. But I've got like five or six, seven years of just graphic design, you know, experience. Oh, so, so here's the deal. Um, no, no, you're worried, yeah. about, you're worried about um, the, the order of your work. And so I wouldn't put it in there the way that you're laying it out to me. I would put in your former media production work at the top of your experience. So when you get to that, what I've done section on my template, yeah, you just need to lead with that. The most relevant work goes first. Okay. There's no gaps in your employment, so you have nothing to worry about. And first of all, I don't think that's that big of a deal anyway. I've had many people email or call in about that issue. But in your specific situation, Daryl, just lead with mm-hmm. that most relevant experience first. That's what I say in the actual template, the PDF. Lead with the most relevant. I'm fine with you leaving stuff off your resume. And the reason is, is because you want the most relevant work experience possible. So go ahead and put that up there first. And then anybody with a brain can follow the track there. Okay, so she did this from this time to this time, but she's been doing this the last six or seven years. But that doesn't matter. She did this. So the most relevant experience is what matters. Remember, they're scanning that resume in about six to 60 seconds. So the relevant yeah. experience you have. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about the order. Okay. Don't put it in the, the chronological order. Put it in the order of importance as it relates to relevance. Make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, but yes, it does. Okay. That's it. So you're off and running. Yeah. Hey, I know, I yeah. know, I know I'm pushing you a little bit because everybody and their mother just does the chronological work experience. But again, remember what this is, folks. This is a brochure. Your resume is a brochure. They're barely scanning this thing if you're just submitting it cold. But I am asking you to go beyond what most people do, and it is hard to find some type of connection that has a mutual relationship attached to it. You want a connection with somebody who's hiring, and that connection is a mutual relationship where that relationship can vouch for you. And I don't care if it's one degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees, five degrees. I don't really care. But it's got to be a solid enough recommendation where they go, okay, I really do know about this person, and... My dad says that Daryl is the sharpest gal he has ever met in his life. You know, whatever that is. And and that's the key. And so when that happens, your resume comes out of the pile and they're going to spend more time scanning that resume. But if you're just, if you're just applying cold, then my template is designed for that. I still want you to use the relationship connection. But if nothing else, my resume is going to make people turn their head sideways and hopefully spend a few extra seconds looking at it because of the way we've laid it out. That's all by design. Uh, full disclosure on that. I talked to Armando, our head of HR, the other day, and we, <laughs> I am going to be meeting with the leadership at Ramsey Solution, not the, the top-level leadership, but the people who are hiring in the company. 
because we had a guy submit a resume the other day and one of our leaders didn't even know about, hadn't shown him the template. He was like, this is a weird look. I've never seen this before. You see what I'm saying? So we designed it that way on purpose. Now everybody's up to speed and I go, oh, okay, great. But I mean, everybody's been doing the resume the same way forever. Why in the world did I switch it up? Because I read the data that hiring managers are spending six to 60 seconds looking at your resume. So if I want to break through the malaise that's going on in their head, I want it to look different. I want the language to be different. That's why we chose the heading. Who I know. What I've done. Or where I've been. You know, all the guys. These headings are there for a reason. To make their eyes stop scanning. Huh? I'm, I'm totally fine if they give you that look that your dog gives you when they, you know, you're talking to them in a different voice and the dog's like, what? what, you, what what's, what's happening here? See, this is a good thing. So in this situation, stop worrying about your job history and think about job relevance. 